Wow. What a work week from heck. Oh, hello there. Yes. Hope you didn't hear that too loudly. My name, for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. I'm, 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 I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. And I do apologize to all my loyal subscribers out there. Um, this has been the work week from heck. And until YouTube decides to monetize me, which is not going to happen for a while, I need a real job. Because I haven't even been hoboing. I think I've only found three pieces of aluminum a whole week. Terrible. I should have found at least a hundred by now. So I have to go do that tonight too. After I get to the gym. Which is after I make this video. So let's talk about some pro wrestling. Yes, I'd like to thank those at Impact Store. I have my nep my nephews. OVE shirt being shipped to me. So at least someone will get a Christmas gift. That's a good sign. But enough about that. Raw, baby. It was interesting. Um, it's kind of suffering a little bit from SmackDown-itis. Whereas the wrestling is really good. All the other non-wrestling segments, you can almost do without. That's the one thing that, well, yes, yeah, for the most part, AEW is doing really good. Their wrestling is amazing. They have poignant, brief non-wrestling segments, and that makes sense. So this is going to be a double-sided show, uh, mainly because. I think I've been working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, straight nearly I think on average about 10 hours a day. That's not good. Well, actually, it's really good. I'm going to be rolling in on my bed like Scrooge McDuck, baby. Got to do that. That's going to be good. And I'm going to get my $85 worth of boots tomorrow. Probably 80 or 87 because for some reason, oh, I'll give a quick shout out. Total Wine and Spirits. If you get $75 worth of booze, and I have to bring this slip. Maybe if you're a member, you get it. But if you get $75 worth of booze, Johnny Walker White, I think a normal 150 size only costs 10 bucks. That's it's actually worth it. Because that'll be actually my Christmas booze. Wow, that's right. In about one month. Yeah, in about one month, I have to set my Christmas bar up. And then in 30, actually 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 more days. I, I'm stuck in the, my little corner here. So I'll get to start live streaming again in December. So enough about that stuff. Um, I do have some shout-outs to get to uh, in a little bit, mainly for AEW show. Let's about some Raw. Woo! Ric Flair, folks. Never be given a live mic. It's one, I can't even understand Ric Flair nowadays. He He gets no script. He just said... Rick, woo! Go out there and do what you do. And Rick's like, woo! He thinks he's in TNA sometimes still. Uh, so he brings out the final member of Team Flair, Drew McIntyre, which is going to be interesting. Because I can't cover. Crown Jewel, because it's on Halloween. I actually have to work all day Halloween. Oh, shoot. Do I have to work all day Halloween? I don't have to work all evening. All afternoon and evening. Wow. That will be interesting, then. Then I'll have the weekend off. I get to... Which is always good. But, uh, so Drew McIntyre faces 
Ricochet. And wow, this was kind of a fun little semi-demi squash match. The reason why I say it's kind of a semi-demi semi squash match. Drew McIntyre is freaking a beast. I mean, he just, for the most part, whenever Ricochet would jump on him, about half the time, Drew would just catch him. Drew would just pummel Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet, again, when he could move and get a lot of momentum behind him, he would do really good. If he went, when he went toe to toe with, with Drew, though, that it did not turn out so well for him. Uh, Drew just, <laughs> oh, in one instance, Drew just literally clubbed him right out of the air. That was awesome. Although Ricochet did hit a burning hammer. Whoa, they allowed a burning hammer. That's awesome. Uh, he could not hit the recoil, though. He did hit the 450 splash, but Drew kicked out of that. And this is Drew McIntyre we're talking about. And then Rick Flair got on the mic again. Oh, oh, Rick. Rick, 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 Rick. Okay, we have to we have to get you off a of Coke, Rick. Rick Flair. Woo! Yeah, he was he was he was something. Um, but this match overall was fun. It was good, it was entertaining. It made sense. Drew the big guy did the big guy moves and just would toss Ricochet around. Ricochet. This red tried to do the flippy flippy stuff. Uh, if he didn't do it right, he would be caught or just sm sm swatted out of the way by Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre won this match. I'll tell you what, it was a fun match. This is a surf and turf match. And then we have the club promo because. They're in Cleveland, mother lovers. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. I guess it's better than what it could have been in New Japan. But I think that's a tiny bit more accepted over there. They, they Japanese culture is kind of off a little bit, especially if you're used to American culture. <laughs> Every woman over in Japan looks like a schoolgirl. That's probably a terrible stereotype. I should be banned from YouTube just for saying that. But then we had uh, the next match, Alistair Black versus Jason Reynolds. It's a squash match for Alistair Black. Uh, the jobber tried, though. I'll give him credit where credit's due. He got about two licks. Offense in. For the most part, Alistair Black had his way with him. Hit the black mask. And that was it. Uh, Alistair Black, of course, went over. And this was it was a squash match. At least he had a jobber, and the job the jobber at least tried, folks. So therefore, this is a ham sandwich of a match. And we had AOP did their promo again. Yeah. I want to see him wrestle. Hearing him talk for a few times is good. Seeing them wrestle more often is better, though. And then the king. What? Yes, you heard me. The king. What? Was interviewing Rusev. What? Please, folks, be more respectful. Yeah, right? What as much as you want. It's more entertaining for me. I like the what chant. What chant simple. Especially if you're going to carry that cadence. So, I mean, if you're going to have a cadence where people are going to what you, you're going to get whatted. I'll tell you what, if I was a pro wrestler, I'd love to get whatted. Because one, it means they're paying attention to me. That's a good sign. Uh, Rusev, again, was asked a tough question. He's still wearing his his wedding ring. Oh, I don't have a wedding ring, that's why. Um... Because he still loves Lana. However, Lana's in Rusev's favorite restaurant that Rusev never take, took her to. How come she never just asked? Or went there with girlfriends or stuff? Wrestling! Uh, she's there with Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's enjoying himself. <laughs> and, and Lana, by the way, is no longer Russian. She lost that Russian accent a while ago. 
Thanks for watching. Again, another fun match was Andrade Sin Almas. Zelina Vega taking on Sin Cara. I forget Sin Cara means, I think it's like without face or something. I don't know. My, my Spanish is horrible. Um, Sin Cara is pretty good. I mean, he's still a little bit botchy. But the, for the stuff he does, though, I couldn't walk on the ropes like him, so I'll give him a pass. I mean, that was... Uh, he did... I mean, he had the Phoenix power bomb, which is pretty good. It was a weird botchy slam, though. I mean, I think he only botched it one other time. He was going off the rope. The ropes do weird things. Just as AJ Styles and AJ Styles battled with the top rope in Chikara. Uh, I know here in Daytona Beach, the top rope has done some weird things to people. I think it's mainly due, I think, a little bit to humidity levels. And sometimes they might get loosened up a little bit. It just happens over time, especially if you have two big guys like jarring the ring all over the place. It's only one big turnbuckle screw. Pulls it together, so I'm sure that loosens up every so often. But I think more so is probably the humidity, and God knows what's on the gym floor <laughs> or the locker room floor. You never know; those public gyms are pretty sketchy sometimes. Uh, again, Andrade goes after the lucha mask because that's his thing. Again, he is El Idolo. He always goes after the lucha mask, which is pretty good. Lena Vega gets involved. Zelina Vega is four foot nine four foot nine. There's no way she's five foot tall. No way she's five two. She's tiny. If she tried to do a hurricane on me, honestly I would just no sell it and drop her on her back. Or drop her on her butt and give Alistair Black all the booze and say, I'm sorry, I'm not selling for your wife. I am three times the size of your wife. It's not happening. Sin Cara is twice the size. Selena Vega, yeah, it's one thing if Nikki Cross is selling, because they're about the same height. Nikki Cross is a little bit thicker, more muscular. Um, Cara Flair is lankier. Char I don't know, Char Becky Lynch. <sighs> Again, not much. She's bigger than, I say bigger, relatively bigger than Zelina Vega. But to have a 200 some odd pound man to Zelina Vega, especially with that spot, yeah, it's not believable anymore. Um, I want to see. Grey Mysterio could. Chad Gable might. But if you ever tried that against someone the size-ish of the War Raiders, not happening. Again, Sarah Logan, yes, but that makes sense. War Raiders, no. So again, it was a fun match, though. Oh, Sin Cara can still fly, though. Andrade, the thing is, with these matches, they're doing a lot less wrestles. Drew did Rest holds, but he made them look nasty, though. He would, like, put all his weight and just, like, sit on Corey's shoulder. If they did arm... I mean, again, they do flying arm drags, which is amazing. Um, so that makes sense. You go into an arm bar, to so an arm drag. Again, it's a transition move. It makes sense. This was a fun match. Selena Vega always seems to get involved. This is a good cheeseburger match, though. Oh, yeah, and Andrade won. Next, we have Umberto Carrero. Carrero. Yeah, I've always up his last name. But Umberto was there. Uh, the Street Posse was there, and then they did something about Crown Jewel. And then they had, again, another semi-squash match. And I think they did this match a couple of months ago. Where it was Viking Raiders taking on Ryder and Hawkins. Uh, Kurt got a little bit of offense in. Ryder got a little bit of offense in. Other than that, the War Raiders got all the offense in. And Viking Raiders go over. They defend their, their title. It was fun. They gave it a shot. A good ham sandwich. Uh, 
And with the Viking Raiders going over, it makes sense. It's a ham sandwich of a match. Can't complain that much. Uh, the Bobby Lashley and Lana were asked to leave the restaurant. Manager said, Tranquilo, you don't have to pay for anything. Rusev comes in, destroys, destroys the setup of a restaurant. Wow. Uh, Rey Mysterio then comes out. The g the greatest mass wrestler of all time. Uh, he is interrupted by Shelton Benjamin. Then Kane Velasquez comes out and destroys Shelton Benjamin. Makes sense. Maybe this will be a warm-up match for Kane Velasquez before Crown Jewel. Yeah, that makes sense. Monday. I wonder what SmackDown's going to be like on next Friday. That's going to be weird. <sighs> I do apologize for some stuff. I think it's that time of year. Oh, my throat's feeling a lot better. It's just that time of year. It's just that weird humidity level. Then we had Seth Rollins versus Umberto Guerrero in a match. And oh, wow. Umberto is so good. I'll tell you what, Seth is very quickly going down that totem pole. Because Umberto is the master of the Mexican armbar. He is the master of all Mexican wrestlers. Umberto, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Seth again, he at the beginning underestimates um, Umberto. He's a little bit more arrogant about the skills. Very ignorant of the skills of Umberto. Uh, Umberto is so flippy. And Seth has his heel spots, too. So I wonder if he's going to go heel a little bit. I mean, he's already burnt down a stage set. Can't be much more heel than that. Although Randy Orton did burn down a house. I don't know. Uh, Seth again hits his matches. I'll tell you what, when it comes to when it comes to a good pro wrestling match, Jerry the King Lawler is on point. Um, if if you can keep him focused, Jerry the King Lawler can give you so much insight into pro wrestling matches. It's actually really amazing. And it adds to the whole experience and adds to the story. Uh, again, Seth was a little bit too much. Umberto hit everything he could at Seth. Seth, again, uh, got the kick, stomping. Seth wins, but then again, Seth reverts back to face, shakes on Burrow's hands. Good job, kid. And I'll tell you what, it was a foul. Um, Burrow really made this match, though. Seth does all his normal Seth stuff, which is getting kind of going into, like, the moves of Doom. And it was a surf and turf match. Then I think earlier in the night they showed um, one of the Bollywood boys taking the belt off of Our Truth, and then eventually Our Truth went after the wrong Bollywood boy. So the Bollywood boys are twenty four seven champions. So that's kind of fun. So I do have to write these notes down because I do have to think about my havoc of Halloween matches. So I can't say Halloween havoc, but the havoc of Halloween is different. And then the final match, the main event, it was the debuting Street Profits versus the club. And I don't know. They're jobbing the club out. And that's not good. Mainly the fact that Carl Anderson is the one that always eats the pin. So what happened in this match, Street Profits come out. They don't want to go down the ramp. They want to go party. I'm going to go party with the people, which I'm cool with. That was fun. It was different. Um, they said something like that. AJ seemed confused because I guess AJ thought it was going to be a six-man tag, but there were only two people there. So I think we're going to get a six-man tag next week. And next week, wow, I have some more videos to make. Wow. Time and tide do wait for no one. Or Carl Anderson, he just got speed up a lot. Um, eventually, he does get the hot tag into Owens. Tell you what, Carl Anderson has a good jumping knee, though, too. Uh, for the most part, the Street Profits really hold their own. 
in this match. It's quick tags by the clubs. Again, kind of doing the heelish stuff. Every time the ref would be distracted, AJ would, would get his licks in. And he just kind of like didn't know he was there until the ref sent him out. And then Kevin Owens comes out. And AJ eats a stunner. Whoa, from Kevin Owens. I don't think they were in Ring of Honor at the same time. So this would be a new good dream match. AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens for the U.S. title. That would be awesome. Um, again, the Street Profits eventually start to overwhelm the club. Poor Carl Anderson eats the pin. And the club lose again. They're the jobbers. To the Street Profits. I'll say what, for the most part, it was a kind of fun match. And I'll tell you what, it was a good cheeseburger match. That's right. And that was raw. Fun? Again, the, the, back, the backstage stage stuff was meh. The wrestling, for the most part, was really good. I would give this a cheeseburger. And again, the wrestling was really good. Just like I said before, the backstage segments, uh, you can almost deal with that. And that was a Monday Night Raw for you. Now we're going to do a little break. I'm talking about some AEW. AEW, AEW, AEW. Wow, AEW is weird. And I have a lot to say about that. And awesome closing comment. Um, but first, I have to get my shout outs out there. Let's see here. Uh, Snap for us. You, sir, just told Nikki Cross to take it all off. And Heinz, bruh, three. Three, bruh. I don't know. I don't like it when people put threes instead of E's. Heinzberg, though. You, sir, are superior. Again, any way you can get your free little video dedication is that you can always shout out to the one, the only Hobo Tom in the Discord on YouTube, or you can leave a comment or send an email. And hopefully, and sometimes if you chat with me while I do my live streams, I have to be a lot more careful how I do my live streams because I've had, well, I have had three comments. This has been so well spaced. I'm smart about that stuff. What's about AEW? Because, whoa! AEW is so different compared to WWE. I mean, AEW, their single matches are okay. Their women's division sucks. But, oh my gosh. Their tag team division. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Because, wow, it starts off Private Party versus the Lucha Brothers. Uh, oh, wow. Whenever there was a two count, it was two sweeps. So much stuff. That stopped by Phoenix. They were flying all over the place. I mean, so much striking, so much flying, so much crazy lucha action. I like that because in the next tag team match, it's an entirely different style. So I do appreciate the fact that AEW does have different styles on showcase 
it makes it interesting. It makes it fun. It makes it enjoyable to watch. It's like, hey, this is tag team wrestling here. Wait, this is also tag team wrestling. This is also tag team wrestling. Whoa, my blown. It's like the early days of ECW. You're like, you can do that? You can do the triple flip moonsault? The Arabian face buster? The Van Daminator? Rolling thunder! And just stab people in the head with a fork. And <laughs> tables. Never forget those tables. Uh, but again, how they can do all this flippy stuff. Uh, Pentagon hit an exploder driver. Oh, wow. That looked nasty. And probably, probably they get the second win. They can fly, too. That Jaeger bomb. I never saw that before. That was awesome. That was like a crucifix bomb up after flipping from outside, outside in the ring in a crucifix position on the back. That looked good. Uh, <laughs> the gory bomb leg drop combo. How do they really think of this stuff? How early did they get to the arena to actually say, this is what we're going to do? So I'll tell you what, this stuff was amazing. And that was a Canadian destroyer. I'll tell you what, this uh, they were flying. They did that stomp package pile driver at the end. Uh, private party hit the gin and juice. They were just flying all over the place. Lucha Brothers won. I don't know why this wasn't in the main event. This could have this could have main evented in WrestleMania, and people would have gone home freaking crazy because this, folks, was a filet mignon match. Uh, then we have the Dark Order versus SCU. Whoa. This match had an entirely different style for it. This was a much more classic, more traditional wrestling match versus a flying lucha flippy stuff from the other, ma other match. I like that. And the fact that they're doing different things, it's a different style, it's a little bit different pace. Still really fast action. But the pace is so fast action, but it's a little bit slower pace, more methodical pace than just flip, 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 jump, run, flip, jump. It's like, okay, arm drag, arm drag, arm bar to arm drag to headlock to off the ropes. They had a little bit more wrestles, but I'll tell you what, I like it when they use the wrestles that set, set up not just there to have wrestled mania like, like Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is terrible at that. Um, like a much more traditional match than the previous Lucha match. In different styles, it makes it fun, makes it feel original. It's like, hey, this is a tag team match in one style. Oh, wow, they can do that? Oh, wait, they can do this too. There is no set AEW style, with the exception of kicking out of finishers like forever. I mean, that's my only real complaint. Um, they had the creepers show up. That's awesome. Very cool. They make the human throne by, by Dark Uno. Dark Uno is so good. The Super Smash Brothers are fun. I wonder if Halloween... Oh, that's what they should do. They should come back as Super Smash Brothers for Halloween. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, again, the heel double team whenever they could. That 10 count's a little confusing because they seem to be in there longer than 10. They do have that. They have, they have the Sent on Atomico by Evil Uno, which I think is just... Sent on Atomico is almost like the Swanton Bomb. They call it something different. Excalibur is really good. He knows the moves. JR doesn't know Jack Squat. Tony likes to learn. JR doesn't like to learn, though. And then eventually, Dark Horror got stuck in the 2X in the double team Dragon Sleepers. I'll tell you what, it was fun stuff. A lot of double team work. Eventually, SCU did go over. This was fun. This was amazing. This, I'll tell you what. This match. That match. I don't know. My only qualm with this, actually, you know what? They they weren't so bad at it. This is another filet mignon match.
again, the fact that they can do this stuff, they didn't have a completely different style, tell a completely different story in the ring, uh, tell how they're such a good tag team, and this is tag team wrestling. It's amazing. Uh, Joey Janela versus Kenny Omega was pretty good. Uh, Janela, he just starts flying. They start off, they try to have a really technical catch as catch Ken match. Then they, then Joey Janela starts flying. Kenny Omega can do his flippy stuff too. It's a fun match. Um, uh, Kenny, the weird thing is Kenny Omega is no longer a main eventer. There were times Kenny Omega was only on main events. If he wasn't on main events, he was on. He was up there on really big shows. Because again, he may have been in Wrestle Kingdom. I want to say he was like the the match before the main event for a Dominion. Sakura Genesis, he was up there too. He wasn't. He wasn't a curtain jerker. Um. So I don't know. The fall of the cleaner. We'll see. Uh, eventually, again, it was a fun match, though. Uh, Kenny Omega finally gets in rhythm, eventually starts hitting all his moves. And it started to become a New Japan neck-breaking match. And it's fun, but you're like, wait a second. This is where this match and the next match, I kind of downgraded. Mainly because... If you're going to have a neck-breaking match, if you're going to do like three uh, Snapdragon suplexes, that should be it. Okay, The guy should have nothing left in his spinal column in this area of his body. The fact that Joey Janela, he didn't no-sell it, he would kick out, and you're like, that would kill most normal people. I look like Joey Janela, someone bit his lip or bit his tongue, he was bleeding from the mouth a little bit. I'm sure that's that's such a minor thing after what Joey Janela has been through. Uh, became again the New Japan style match of just trying to like I'm gonna we're gonna see how many times we can throw each other on the back of our neck. Uh, and after that, um, again Kenny Omega went for the V trigger. Joey Janela countered it a few times. Eventually, though, he did hit the flying V V trigger and into the one wing angel right away. That put away Joey Janela. Kenny Omega wins the match. The cleaner wins. Again, it's one of those things. If you're going to do nasty neck-breaking moves, those should just be finishers. Just, just get out of the way. Not every match has to be a 10, 15, 20-minute match. They get a little long, and there seems to be some downtime. Eh, it's a cheeseburger of a match. And then I think, oh, that's the next part. What was that before? Oh, no, in the, um, I forgot to mention this, but during the SEU Dark Order match, Gener uh, Chris Jericho and, and, and his inner circle came into the ring. They had their tickets. They went right to their luxury box. And they enjoyed the wrestling show. Eventually, we did see a Cody promo. Cody, pro Cody does as Cody does. Eventually, he goes up there. He sees Jericho. He says, shut up and wrestle. He just heckles him all the time. Jericho's so good. Uh, eventually, Cody goes up there. DDP shows up. Um, oh, what's his face? Uh, MJF goes goes up there. They start, uh, Dustin Reynolds goes up there. Cody eventually wraps his fist in his scarf and punches the glass. Brawl ensues. I wrapped him off. I have my ticket. He assaulted me, which technically is assault. Then we get to the best friends, and Orange Cassidy's there with them, taking on the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks, oh wow. They just decided to super kick the snot of poor Orange Cassidy because he's just there and his hands in his pockets. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got super kicked for his efforts. Nope. So we'll see how Orange Cassidy goes over in AEW. Because he's much more of a good indie character versus a pro wrestler. The Young Bucks, they're always, they always heels. <laughs> JR just no-sells Orange Cassidy. JR hates Orange Cassidy, I think. 
Uh, there's 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 buck bucks all over the place, which is kind of cool. Chuck Taylor. <laughs> oh, he says hi, mom. So I'll say hi, Miss Taylor. Uh, they did the Doomsday Machine, the Doomsday Knee on the outside. That looked incredible. Uh, then they did the Thrix, the Young Bucks did the Thrix Suplex into a DET with no finish. And Excalibur has to know that everyone kicks out of the Falcon Zero. And again, this is one of those matches that kind of suffers because everyone kicked out of every move that should be a finisher. And there was a rough distraction, so Orange, <laughs> Orange Cassidy came flying from the top rope. Chair's like, What's he doing? Get off my yard, you young whippersnapper. So Jared's just playing up old man a lot. Again, this is really tag team heavy wrestling. This was a fun match, but again, uh, the Young Bucks hit the, um, oh. So it's when they do a whole series of moves. I forget what it's called now. But it's just like Moonsault. Five star frog splash, starting with like a pile drive, like a brain buster, bucks in motion, or something like that. I forget what it is, but they win. Uh, best friends, of course, as always, they hug it out in the middle of the ring eventually, um, or previously. The thing is, again, the finishers don't feel like finishers, they feel like, yeah, this is like spot monkey time. It's fun, but I don't know. It just takes away from some of the magic. Oh, the match is going to be over. No, it's not. I'd be dead if they did that to me. It was a good cheeseburger of a match. Then it was Jamie Hayter, I guess, who comes from across the pond, taking on Britt Baker DDS. Britt Baker's there in Britsburg. Who I don't care less. Uh, she comes on in a custom suit, <laughs> and and the uh, Pittsburgh Sealer mascot, whatever he is. Uh, Jamie Hader starts to work with the seal. I'll tell you what, Jamie Hader is really good. Though, I mean, she was doing some kicks to poor little Britt Baker. She even pulled out the wet willy on Britt Baker. You sick, ah, you sick, b, you sick, b. So that was kind of fun. It's always good to see just annoying, like, kid like wrestling moves like the Wet Willie. You know, it's not going to hurt. It's just freaking annoying and disgusting. Although, and it's not necessarily X rated because it would only be X rated if she went down there, pulled out something, and stuck a bloody something into Britt Baker's mouth or ear. That would be X rated. That was funny. Uh, and, and they do a whole yay boo things. Um, this match just felt long. Again, you don't have to be epic matches to be a good wrestling match. The jobber can still get their move set in. Britt Baker could look stronger. And a couple of things look kind of botchy too. Jamie Hader for a while it looked like she was going into business for herself because she was somewhat no selling what she did. And she's like, I'm not cooperating. Can you listen to me, you 110 pound skinny woman? I should be able to toss you around like nothing. It is, it is what it is sometimes. Um, Britt Baker does go over in a ham sandwich of a match. And the odd thing is, I don't know. AEW is a terrible women's division. And then there was an interview backstage with, with Jamie Hayter, and, and Brandy Rhodes broke that up for some reason. Who knows? Then the main event of the evening we have John Moxley taking on Bastard Pac. Oh, wow. This was amazing. This was a main event. However,. They only had the TV time left, which was 13 minutes. They could have cut a couple minutes off the Britt Baker match. They could have cut a couple minutes off the Joey Janela match. And this match could have gone for a full regulated 20-minute time limit draw. Instead, it was like a TV time limit draw, which is like 13 minutes. Um, initially, Pac jumped out. 
and just smashed a chair over Moxley's head. And he choked him with his jacket, so that's great. These two just wanted to fight. They wanted to put up their dukes and fight. Uh, Bastard Pac is the best Pac. He just looks so annoyed by everything. Just disgruntled and pissed off. Mox is having the time of his life. He's like, this is finally the matches and the free creative freedom I have. They didn't have in WWE. And Mox just dropped Pac on his head. Oh, on the apron too, which is the second hardest part of the ring. Of course, if you know a ring, the hardest part of the ring is actually the ring post. Actually, it's probably the, the third hardest part because then you have the ring, metal ring steps. Uh, again, it was a good New Japan Pro Wrestling style match. Oh, it was so awesome. It was the Avalanche Falcon Arrow. A 450 on to the floor. Uh, John Moxley hit uh, something else. Not the Death Rider, but his kind of other signature. That was a ref bump. I like me a good ref bump. It went to a TV time limit draw. But then they start, uh, Moxley just started to yell and curse, and, and Pac gave him the finger at the end because I saw a little bit of the overrun a little bit. This was a flaming yawn match. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And I wonder if this is going to set up for something for full gear. So we'll see. I'll tell you what. This, this showing of AEW, minus the women's stuff, they have a horrible women's division. They don't know what they're doing with their women for some reason. This whole show, though, was a surf and turf show. And that was wrestling for the first part of the week. That's impressive. I'm actually going to get this video done and probably up. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow morning, which is only in a few hours anyway. But, um, so I'd like to thank you guys for watching again. Thank you for putting up with my ridiculousness. Again, it's just, it's just been the work week of heck. So I had to kind of double up with the shows. So everyone have a good night, and I look forward to seeing you for Friday SmackDown. And I didn't do the Tuesday show because while I was working, and it's just a review show of what happened. I think they had the, the two dark matches. It was Kiera Hogan versus someone. And the Rascals, which would have been awesome, against Dr. Wagner Jr., Taurus, and Aerostar. Darn impact going back to their old ways. Other than that, everyone else have a good night. I have to go hobo, too. Bye.